So I had somebody trying to talk me into going on to this guy's show, and I had seen a couple of his videos previously where he was doing more funny stuff, and so I'm like, yeah, that's a funny guy. Uh, I'm on the Politics Discord, though. He's welcome to join us there. But I listened to uh, one of his earlier videos of this series, and... Uh, the first part, he was berating a dude uh, that was making some decent points. Although maybe not uh, the most philosophically inclined, um, he was making some good points and he was just sitting there and berating him, which was very unnecessary. Now, I was talking with somebody a little bit earlier today and we actually watched this video. And we were sitting there memeing on him. And I figured... I should sit on here and meme on him. Because, holy crap, have you seen this shit? When you ask an atheist, why is it they don't believe in God? One of the most common responses is, I don't see any good evidence. In this video, I'm going to explain... Straight up. That's a good response if you're not philosophically inclined. ...why the atheist thinks this is a good reason and why it's in fact not a good reason. Welcome to Arguments Against Atheism. I'm Jim Bob. I'm here to give you the goods. So when an atheist says, I don't believe in God because I don't see any good evidence, what they mean is they don't see physical evidence. Now I wonder, are there any underlying assumptions being made in reg So, in my experience, neither scientific or philosophical evidence that meets their burdens is being presented to them. So I feel like at the start, he's just presenting a straw man. This should be a hasty generalization fallacy, just assuming something about an entire audience. ...regards to what evidence is. Well, let's take a look. One obvious assumption the atheist makes is that all truth claims are empirical claims, which is a false starting assumption. Not all truth is obtained in the same way. If there are different ways... No, there's deductive and inductive. So there would be deductive, which would be like logical formulations using true premises to get to a conclusion. And then there's inductive arguments which would be like incorporating reference and, and making true claims about reality right is of arriving at the truth of different types of claims and god's existence isn't the empirical category then we've already spotted a category error the atheist also assumes that a standard for sufficient evidence has been did you hear that isn't the empirical category, then we've already spotted a category error. The atheist also... One more time. ...arriving at the truth of different types of claims, and God's existence isn't the empirical category, then we've already spotted a category... So right here, Jim Bob, this is interesting. You're saying that there's a category error when you ask about empirical evidence for God, right? So what you're saying is that God is not real like people are real. God is real like an ideal is real is possibly conceptual. So what you're saying is that we need to investigate a God or God claims like a platonic ideal. And if that is your God, it seems to not actually exist in the way that most people use the term exist. My understanding, from most of my conversations with people that I have about this topic, is that your God is a real thing interacting with things in the universe, and that God has a physical aspect and a non-physical aspect. If it has a physical aspect, that physical aspect would be subject to empiricism. So either your God is real and subject to empiricism, or God is not real in that sense, and only real in the sense of a concept, which category do you put God in, Jim Bob? You get to pick. You do. This is your choice. But you have to pick one. 
The atheist also assumes that a standard for sufficient evidence has been established. Is there only one type of evidence? No. But in this case, empirical evidence is the standard they are going with. So let's see if they apply the empirical standard to their own beliefs. Is there any... So, before we get to this. So, what he's saying is that empirical evidence is a category and God does not... Or empirical nature or something would be a category and God doesn't belong to that category. So, first off, there's just a big misunderstanding. So, so like, the category of God itself seems to be inconsistent and possibly incoherent, given there's 4,000 God concepts with differing attributes in nature, right? The categories that these things actually belong to, like the creator category that most people claim a God would be, is a totally temporal category. There's nothing non-temporal about that, nothing that exists outside of space-time, right? Um, everything that the creator uses to create stuff is pre-existing material or pre-existing stuff, right? Everything that the created thing is is totally temporal. There's no non-temporal there. You could say there's a physical... And then he's uh, appealing to like a non-physical category. But I don't think this guy even understands the baseline of what he's talking about. I think he's just some charlatan sitting on the interwebs saying shit. Anything the atheist... Kind of like me! ...believes or assumes without empirical evidence. Does the atheist believe in knowledge? Yes. Is there any evidence? No. Does the atheist believe that the regularity in nature will maintain tomorrow? Is there any evidence? No. How about the laws of logic? Is there any physical, empirical evidence for the law of identity? Does the atheist believe in concepts or universal categories? Meaning? These are all examples of things the atheist does in fact believe in. They exist in a particular way, but they are not empirically verified. So I think we have right. enough example examples of things the atheist does in fact... So here's another example of what this guy is saying where he really has no idea about what he's talking about, right? So he's probably going to say something like these are non-material categories and they exist outside of the mind or, or a piece of paper or the internet post you put them on. I mean, this is very easy to address. So the regularity that you talk about is simply you borrowing base naturalistic presuppositions from our worldview, like I exist and you exist as minds, and then the universe exists outside of us. You borrow that from the naturalistic worldview. And then there's also a presupposition that you apply, though, that adds incoherencies that obfuscates everything outside a local scale for you, right? That a God concept, a God thing exists, right? And then so you move down the line, and then you borrow space-time, gravity, all these scientific concepts, right? Uh, quantum physics, all this. And then you call the culmination, the, 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 the uh, all, all of these things in tandem working to create what, what you see as this regularity, the, you call that the regularity, right? But you're just borrowing from our, that regularity that you're calling that you've added other incoherency to. Or I guess the first part was incoherent, but you've added incoherency to that. And so with that, that's obfuscating even more outside of local scale for you. And so that makes things like knowledge for you that seems to be unobtainable in an atheist worldview, but knowledge is very simple, right? That's justified true belief. And the necessary conditions for somebody to obtain knowledge in an atheist worldview would simply be that the universe exists and can get to this point where these minds exist, right? So you have Big Bang, right? Chemical evolution throughout space as stars and whatever up stars are exploding planets are doing planet stuff right zoom into earth four point whatever billion year 4.6 i think billion years ago right 
you've got chemical evolution on Earth till you get to a point with abiogenesis. And I know you probably don't accept that based off of what I've seen so far. But you, you get to abiogenesis, where you get the natural formation of life from non-life, just the or pre-existing organic material. And then that life uh, just gradually changes over time, lots and lots of time. Uh, we get to where we are today. Uh, you get knowledge from stuff that the mind has developed, right? It's, it's justified true belief. We've created systems for this, right? And so that would be the necessary conditions for knowledge in the atheist worldview. And so with logic, logic is very easy to address. Logic is a number of systems that we've created that we can use to determine various truth values of things. Meaning, meaning is something that we ascribe right we ascribe that to things that wouldn't exist without us concepts you probably think are some type of abstract concept that exists either within the mind without some type of uh physical substrate or maybe even in some soul thing right and then information i don't even know where you're going with information or why that would be on the bottom of the screen but i'm excited to see where you go with that one believe in they exist in a particular way but they are not empirically verified so i think we have enough examples to demonstrate the atheist doesn't really apply their empirical standard to their own beliefs but they certainly love to use it against christianity uh... now of course the atheist will say well those aren't my beliefs those are just my axioms okay then my axiom is god exists to further demonstrate the flaw in the standard, what if we use their argument against God's existence against some of the things they believe and see how it sounds? I don't believe in truth. There's no empirical evidence. I don't believe information exists because there's no physical evidence. I don't think knowledge exists because I can't see, taste, or touch it. Where it leads to is absurdity. So it seems as though any argument the atheist levies against God's like I just addressed all that, and even if I didn't, him just saying it leads to absurdity doesn't actually mean it leads to absurdity. Here, I'll replay that. Why don't you listen for some type of justification? Do you hear any justification here? ...demonstrate the flaw in their empirical standard. What if we use their... To further demonstrate the flaw in their empirical standard... What if we use their argument against God's existence against some of the things they believe and see how it sounds? I don't believe in truth. There's no empirical evidence. I don't believe information exists because there's no physical evidence. I don't think knowledge exists because I can't see, taste, or touch it. Where it leads to is absurdity. So it seems as though any argument the atheist levies against God's existence... You see that? This guy's a charlatan. It's based on the physical evidence standard could be made against things like truth itself. The problem points to a larger issue with using mere sense data and empiricism as the foundation of truth. Another assumption we hear is the claim science and empiricism is the best way to truth. Well, is that a truth claim? If it were true that science and empiricism is the best way to truth, shouldn't it be verified through the scientific method? Are you seeing the issue, atheists? Science and empiricism. You're an idiot. You call yourself a philosopher? There's literally a branch of philosophy called the philosophy of science. One problem I see here is that if we have to deal with the problem of induction, that's going to be a problem in both of our views, even if you claim divine revelation, because you still have to have sense data to obtain that divine revelation from the book or whatever. You might be able to say it was written on your heart. There's a bunch of different ways you might be able to go, right? But the point of this is that if you're going to claim the problem in, of induction and that we don't know that the future is going to be like the past based on the overwhelming evidence that we have to make us be forced to accept that, you might as well just be doing deduction, right? That's what you're saying. You might as well just do deduction. The problem there is something that I call the problem of deduction. Now, this isn't a formal one, but it's basically that. And in, in you're just dealing with things that you think are true in your mind. When you're doing this, you're basically a solipsist. And at that point, we're stuck with things that we think are true in our heads. I mean, you can go there if you want. 
but there's not really much fruit. You're just going into solipsism, which is basically just dropping trow and saying that you're going to shit on the conversation rather than having actual philosophical discourse. Empiricism ironically rely wholly on immaterial concepts and assumptions that cannot be verified with those methods. When it comes down to it, all knowledge is faith. Problem here, Mr. Jim Bob, made by Jim Bob, is that not all knowledge is faith-based. Knowledge generally is defined in philosophy as justified true belief. Now, sure, there are things like getter cases. But to say that knowledge itself is faith-based is a vast misunderstanding or misrepresentation of the actual position. I'm going to replay that part for you again. I know I keep doing that, but there's a good reason for it. ...through the scientific method. Are you seeing the issue, atheists? Science and empiricism ironically rely wholly on immaterial concepts and assumptions that cannot be verified with those methods. Discord.gg slash politics. I'm happy to talk with you there. I'd run my atheist presuppositional apologetics on you. I don't mind. It'll be fun. ...knowledge is faith-based. There, I said it. The icky word, faith. <laughs> faith in the atheist view is belief without evidence, plain and simple. In the Christian view, the fact... So, faith is simply unjustified belief. In the Christian view, the fact that everyone has faith is the evidence of things unseen, whether it's immaterial things like logic or truth or the notion of the past or the future or mind. There's no escaping a faith-based starting point. And the act of denying a faith-based starting point would require, well, faith in things without evidence. You see, the atheist puts faith in their reasoning. They wow. Bro, you're saying your entire position is unjustified and then you're trying to superimpose that onto other people? Doesn't work like that. Put faith in their senses. The atheist might say, well, there's a difference between faith and confidence. I have there's a difference between senses and God, Dingleberry. So you have no choice but to accept the undeniable sense data that you're constantly receiving. Confidence. Confidence relies on faith in other things like the regularity of nature, your own reasoning, reliability, which assumes a past, present, and future. There is no view that is wholly derived from evidence. Therefore, the basis for truth is not empirical. If you don't believe me, just check the comments section of this video. For any opposing comment to this video, take note of the non-empirical, immaterial things they include in their comment. Now he's poisoning the well with his misunderstandings on everything he's been discussing. Ask them for evidence of those things. In conclusion, if the question of God's existence is not an empirical question, and both the atheist and the Christian accept the existence of things that are empirically not verified, then who has a better account or explanation for the existence of truth or knowledge? The atheist or the Christian? It seems to me that the atheist takes freely a whole category of mind-dependent things that cannot be verified through empiricism. So why would we... Oh, so that's where he was going with that. He was trying to presuppose some type of duality or... Uh, soul or non-duality or something like that rather than just accepting the truth of identity theory. How wild. Grant the atheist those things. I don't think we should. The atheist might say those are just uh, emergent properties of nature. Well, so if the laws of logic are a product of the brain, whose brain produces the correct laws of logic? Whose biochemistry is correct? And if the laws of logic exist external to the brain, whose biochemistry is accurately aligned with them? And we're back to my first episode of Arguments Against... So, I mentioned this earlier, but the laws of logic are simply laws, prescriptive laws that we've created for systems of logic that we've developed to reason our way through things to try to come up with some type of truth, uh, uh, account for truth, right? Like truth value. We want to know it's true. True or false, right? That's it. That's it. Now, if you want to get 
pedantic and and try to say the law of identity applies to reality that's insane the law of identity is a equals a but you could say that if somebody was to try to give an analogy to that you could say like a to explain that in in your view to your view better you could say like a dog is a dog today and tomorrow not because of the law of identity holding it together but because of the biochemistry the biochemistry of that animal the gravity holding it on the planet earth the all, all these processes and systems that are occurring that allow that dog to be a dog today and tomorrow that's not a law of logic a law of logic is a prescriptive law for a system that we've developed to reason our way through things and anybody that has studied even the most basic logic will know this and see what this guy is saying and understand that he's a charlatan against atheism where i present a massive problem for the materialist please go watch it also if you like this video please like share i might and i might i might go watch like that. see more of these videos please consider sending a bob chat at bobchats.com also linked in the description thanks a lot wow 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 that was a doozy that was five minutes of madness so, I pretty much addressed everything as we were going through the video, but... Yeah, Jim Bob, one of your people came to me and was like, Hey, you need to come on a show. I don't care about going on your show. I'm, I'm part of the Politics Discord. We've got a bigger platform. You're wel welcome to come chat with us. We could do a stage if you wanted to do a stage. I'm happy to run Atheist Precept on you. But this stuff is insane bro what are you doing here what are you doing here you call yourself a philosopher I'm a really bad philosopher and I see this and 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 my brain almost exploded Jim Bob Jim Bob what are you doing dude go read also, everyone else, make sure to like and subscribe and comment. You guys are all awesome.